Good morning, everybody. Hey, just a reminder, uh, 1130, they're leaving to go down to the flower show and hand out these uh, tracks that we had made up. Uh, these are, it's great, it's just Gospel of John chapter 3, some other information, church website. Uh, but it looks a lot like the program and the information they're handing out at the flower show. And so, <clears throat> and it's got flowers all over it, see that? So people are like, oh, great, hey, thank you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Look, we're studying uh, Abraham, or Abram, and he's in Ur of the Chaldees. He's, it's a city for the worship of the moon god and pagan idolater. And then God interrupted his life. And hopefully you know a good part of the story from that point forward. You never know who you might interrupt their life today just by handing them a simple track to say, hey, the Lord, you know, God bless you, good morning, here you go, Jesus loves you, whatever you hand it to them. And they walk away like, yeah, okay. Well, and later on they read it. And they start digging into the word, all because you were down there just to hand them a card, and God used it to interrupt their life. He interrupt your lives, right? Maybe God can use you today to interrupt somebody else's life. Oh, I can't go on that. Well, you know, in your own strength, you can't. But if you come down, you have great fellowship, you have a great time. Uh, it's been a blessing each year when folks have gone down. So just pray about it. If you're not going down, if you think about it during the day, pray for those who are going down, just for God's divine appointments uh, to minister to the people coming to the flower show. So, uh, Steve, I think you got a, this was a camera they threw out this week just to show you what's been going on, aside from the snow. You guys can thank Ray at the CD table here. He just tossed the camera out. And <laughs> they had to quick shore the thing up for the high winds of that last snowstorm, so they were running cross supports and all kinds of things. And uh, they were here late. I mean, they definitely tried to take advantage of the weather when they could. So it's moving along. Interesting. First Corinthians, yeah, amen. First Corinthians chapter, first Corinthians, that's Wednesday night. <laughs> it's Wednesday night. What the, what's wrong with me? We've been having a great time in first Corinthians, but right now we're in uh, Genesis, the end of chapter 11, into chapter 12. Third service last week, we thank the Lord that the bulb on the projector did not burn out during uh, the time of Genesis from September to uh, last week. Simple things. Father, we settle our hearts before you and, and Abraham. We, we study him, we hear the name uh, Mighty in Faith. We think of him as <clears throat> one of the spiritual greats, one of the giants. willing to leave uh, his homeland, his family, step out. And him, all the nations of the earth will be blessed ultimately through Christ. We hear we're going to sit with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob at the marriage feast of the Lamb. We hear he's called the friend of God. It's a pretty intense reputation. And yet, Lord, we study through this beginning of Genesis, chapter 11 and 12 here, and we find out he's a guy just like us, makes mistakes, trips and stumbles, blows his witness in front of the unbelievers. But through the whole thing, you remain faithful. What a blessing to know, Lord, it's not by works, lest any man should boast, but by grace through faith we're saved. It's a gift of God. And so as we study Abram, as he begins to walk with you, may we be encouraged, Lord, just as you're committed to Abram, you're committed to us. And thank you, Lord, that our salvation is not dependent upon our work. Our salvation is dependent upon the work of Christ on the cross, risen from the dead on the third day, who gives eternal life to everyone who would ask him. Thank you for these things, and please bless this time in your word now for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. So, chapter 11, verse 27. Now, these are the generations of Terah. Terah begat Abram, Nahor, and Haran. And Haran begot Lot. How many have heard Lot before? Okay. We're gonna <laughs> and Haran died before his father Terah in the land of his nativity, in Ur of the Chaldees, uh, roughly six miles or so uh, from the Euphrates. It was the center of uh, Hurriki worship, the idea of Ur, Hurriki. 
It was an ancient center for worship of the moon god. Ur the Chaldees was a great moon city. And uh, there's, doc- there's, there's remains and things here to document this idea. So it, it's a city where they worship the moon. Interesting. And Abram and Nahor took them wives. And the name of Abram's wife was Sarai. The name of Nahor's wife, Milcah. Daughter of Haran and, and poor first service. I forget everything for them. You guys get the benefit of one service. But Abram obviously means uh, exalted or, or uh, elevated father, exalted father. Sarai is my princess. And these names will change. Abram took his son, or sorry, Abram and Nahor took them wives. Verse 29, the name of Abram's wife was Sarai. The name of Nahor's wife, Milcah. Milcah is the daughter of Haran, the father of Milcah, the father of Iscah. So Nahor marries his niece. But stating it, we'll get to it later in the law. But Sarai was barren, which means she had no child. Verse 31, And Terah took Abram his son, and Lot the son of Haran, his son's son, and Sarai his daughter-in-law, his son Abram's wife. And they went forth with them from Ur the Chaldees to go into the land of Canaan. And they came unto Haran and dwelt there. And the days of Terah were 205 years, and Terah died in Haran, which is really in Syria, really northern Syria the area. And so he died. Now the Lord had said unto Abram, number one, get thee out of thy country. Did he do it? Did he? Where is he? Haran, that's no longer the Chaldees. Did he do it? Yes, check. Don't worry. We appreciate your participation. Number two, get thee out from thy country. Number two, from thy kindred and from thy father's house. Did he get away from his family? Answer, they traveled with him. Half a check. And I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you. and I will make your name great. Did God do that? Sure, the Christians know him, the Jews know him, the Muslims know him, a lot of folks in the world know him, yeah. And you shall be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and I will curse them that curseth thee. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed, pointing ultimately to Jesus. And so Abram departed as the Lord had spoken unto him. And Lot, who's Lot? His nephew. That was part of his father's house, right? Went with him. And Abram was 70 and five years old when he departed out of Haran. You know, a lot of thoughts, and again, you, first service, you know, it's, we're all waking up together, but it, it's so interesting to me when God tells us to do something and we have to do it. You know, get out of your country, he did. Take, get away from your father's house, well, he kind of didn't do that. Take, get away from your kindred, well, he took some of them with him. So often it's interesting, when we kind of half comply, it just delays what God really wants to do. I find personally... You know, you're half compromised. God's, God's going, well, you, when are you going to get it right so I can work here? Interesting here. This just kind of slows some things down. But God will eventually part them off, and Terah died in Haran, and eventually Lot will move off, and that'll be an interesting story. But we'll get there in a little while. But let's do a little research here for a minute. Let's go to Acts chapter 7. Right-hand turn, Acts chapter 7. Not long ago, we were in the book of Acts. Stephen gives his defense before the leaders of Israel. There's a whole story going on behind that, but the high priest answered and said, Are these things so? Chapter 7, verse 1. And Stephen said, Men and brethren and fathers, hearken. The God of glory appeared unto our father Abraham while he was in Mesopotamia, between the two rivers, or the Chaldees, before he dwelt in Haran. So before he moved to Haran, God appeared to him. And he said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred, and come into the land which I shall show thee. And so then came he out of the land of the Chaldeans and dwelt in Haran. And from thence, when his father was dead, he removed him into this land wherein you now dwell. And he gave him not inheritance in it, no, not so much as to set his foot on, yet he promised that he would give it to him for a possession and to his seed after him, when as yet he had no child." And God spake on this wise, that his seed should sojourn in a strange land, and that they should bring them into bondage and entreat them evil four hundred years. And the nation to whom they shall be in bondage will I judge, saith God, and after that shall they come forth and serve me 
in this place. And so he gave him the covenant of circumcision. And Abraham begot Isaac and circumcised him on the eighth day and begot Jacob. And Jacob begot the 12 patriarchs. And it goes on from there. Interesting history. On your way back, go to Joshua. Joshua 24. Wish you'd bought those tabs at the Bible store. Your neighbor's already there. Still trying to find it. Joshua 24. In verse 2. Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel together to Shechem. We're going to be in that town in a little bit with Abram. He called for the elders of Israel and for their heads and for their judges and their officers, and they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said unto all the people, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Your fathers dwelt on the other side of the flood, that would be the Euphrates, in the old time, even Terah, the father of Abraham and the father of Nahor, and they served other gods. Well, that's a shock, isn't it? And I took your father, Abraham, from the other side of the flood, that would again be Euphrates, and led him throughout all the land of Canaan and multiplied his seed and gave him Isaac, as promised. And I gave unto Isaac, Jacob, and Esau. I gave unto Esau, Mount Seir, to possess it. But Jacob and his children went down into Egypt. And I sent Moses also and Aaron, and I plagued Egypt according to that which I did among them. <clears throat> and afterwards I brought you out. Back to Genesis. Now the Lord God had said unto Abraham, and we found this out from Stephen, he said it to him while he was in Ur of the Chaldees, where he was in a family of pagan worshiping idolaters, in the town of the moon god. <clears throat> Anybody want to guess what god they worshiped among others? Probably the local moon god thing. In other words, God interrupted his life. Can you relate to that? He called them. Come out of your country. Come out from your kindred, from your father's house. Go to the land that I will show you. Ooh, let's go to Hebrews 11. We didn't read that yet. Let's look at that for a minute. Hey, we're turning so much. It was so easy with the slides. I just sat here. Yeah, just turn to Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it, the elders obtained a good report. And through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen are not made or were not made of things which do appear. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it he, being dead, yet speaketh. By faith, Enoch was translated so that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of those or of them, sorry, that diligently seek him. By faith, Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became an heir of the righteousness which is by faith. By faith Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed. What if he hadn't? And he went out, not knowing whither he went. By faith he sojourned in the land of promise as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob. And Jacob probably about 15 when Abram died the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. And through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age, being because she judged him faithful who had promised. And therefore sprang even of one and him as good as dead, so many as the stars of the sky in multitude and as the sand which is by the seashore innumerable. These all died in faith not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, were persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims in the earth by faith. So back to chapter 12. The Lord God said unto Abraham, how did he introduce himself to him? I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Who's Isaac? These things are not, I, sorry, my mind, how did he, I am the God of Adam, 
you know, uh, Enoch, uh, Noah, and Shem? Abraham can't go, yeah, I saw you in chapter 11 there. Yeah, I, I know who you are. I've read about you. He's just worshiping idols. Get out from your country, from your kindred, from your father's house to a land I'll show you. And I will make of you a great nation. What nation would that be? Anybody know? Starts with an I. Anybody? Israel. Did God do that? Oh, yeah. Keep an eye on them. Tough stuff going on right now. I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great. Has God done that? Yes. And you shall be a blessing, and I will bless them that bless you, and I will curse him that curseth you. You know, we've gone through articles back, even in the previous administration. Watch.org, it's a website out there, uh, Bill Koenig. He actually had a book called, I think, Eye of the Storm, where he details bad policy decision by even the previous administration, as well as the current, where they make a bad policy decision against Israel, and suddenly the United States suffers at the same time. They're forced to evacuate Gaza, and here comes Hurricane Katrina, about the same number of people being displaced. What's going on lately with the current administration? They're forcing Israel to freeze developing of settlements and taking control of their land. What have we been doing since November? Freezing, <laughs> including Washington. Interesting parallel. You can go research it on your own. I will bless them that bless thee, curse them that curse thee. Interesting, too. I will bless them that bless. Second bless is plural. I will curse him that curseth. Second curse is singular. Implying the idea there will be more who bless you than curse you. I like that. <clears throat> and in you, Abraham, all families of the earth shall be blessed. And so Abram departed as the Lord had spoken unto him. And Lot went with him. The Bible does not hide where God's people don't quite hit the ball. It reports it. Lot went with him. And Abraham was 75 years old when he departed out of Haran, not out of Ur, the Chaldees, Haran. Some feel it might have been as early as 50 years of age when God spoke to him. We don't know. It doesn't tell us for sure. Not relevant for where we are right now. But he's 75 when he gets out of Haran. And Abraham took Sarai, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son. And some feel the reason that Lot's being held on to is because he would make a decent heir if there's no one else. But God had, never mind, just, and all their substance that they had gathered and the souls that they had gotten in Haran, and they went forth to go into the land of Canaan. And into the land of Canaan they came. And Abram passed through the land unto a place of Shechem, same place Joshua was talking to them. Shechem has a whole lot of activity that occurs there. Jacob will purchase some land there from the sons of Hamor. While abiding in that area, one of the sons of Hamor, named Shechem, will rape Dinah, his daughter. That becomes a problem. We'll get to that later in chapter 34. It, you don't need daytime soaps. Just read your Bible. It's all here. There's one who will sit at a well and talk to a woman who comes out in the middle of the day to draw water, which is not the right time. And he'll say, go call your husband. She'll say, I don't have a husband. He'll say, you're right. You've had five husbands, and the one you have now is not your husband. And this you've spoken truthfully. And she said, whoa, sir, I perceive you're a prophet. I'm busted. Our fathers say we should worship her in Mount Gerizim. You Jews say on, uh, in Mount Moriah there in Jerusalem. On, uh, which one? Woman, there's a time that comes where we will neither worship on this mountain or that mountain. But those who worship God will worship him in spirit and in truth. Why no one Messiah comes to explain all these things? I who speak to you am he. Who was this? Jesus. There's a lot of things that happen in this town. Very interesting. Shechem. So they passed through the land of Shechem, into the plain of Moreh. <clears throat> and the Canaanite was in the land. And the Lord appeared unto Abram and said, Unto thy seed will I give this land. Question. What's the name of his son right now? Answer. He doesn't have one. By faith. Unto your seed will I give this land. What does Abram do? And there he built an altar unto the Lord. 
who appeared unto him. God's appearing. Abram begins to build altars. And he removed, does it tell us how God appeared? Answer, no. There's a lot I want to know when I get to heaven. He removed from thence unto a mountain in the east of Bethel and pitched his tent. Having Bethel, house of God, we'll see that again with Jacob, right? On the west and high, which would be house of ruins, on the east. And there he built an altar unto the Lord. So he just keeps moving through the land and building altars. And he called upon the name of the Lord. And Abram journeyed, going on still toward the south. And there was a famine in the land. And Abram went down into Egypt to sojourn there, for the famine was grievous in the land. Now, does it tell us God told him to go to Egypt? Anybody? Doesn't say it, does it? Does it tell us God told him not to go to Egypt? Anybody? Doesn't say that either. You mean he's got to make decisions like we do at times? Yeah. Hey, how many are relieved by that? I mean, just he's going, ah, oh, doesn't look good. Lot's going, right there, look, look, it looks so good. It's well watered. Come on, right there. They got the Nile. Come on, come on. Bad famine. So grievous, they headed down. So verse 11, it came to pass when he was come near to enter into Egypt that he said unto Sarai, his wife, Behold now, I know that thou art a fair woman to look upon. Take note, gentlemen. Therefore, it shall come to pass when the Egyptians shall see thee, that they shall say, This is his wife, and they will kill me, but they will save you alive. Say, I pray thee, thou art my sister, that it may be well with me for thy sake. My soul shall live because of you. And, you know, okay, here we go. We got a plan. First of all, uh, she dies at the age of about 127. He's 75. We think they're about 10 years apart, so that puts her about early 60s, 60, 65, somewhere in that ballpark, which if you live to 127 is about midlife, which would be tantamount to about 30s. And at 65, this woman is, is so beautiful that he's got to go, oh, we go down, I'm going to have to get, get the pool cue. I'm going to have to beat the men off her as we work our way through Egypt. He's, he knows, i got trouble coming. And how many, you know, oh, come on, it's not that bad, Abram. You're overreacting. Uh, he, he knows. We get down there, it's going to be a problem. So listen, when we get down there, do me a favor. Tell him you're my sister. Why would he want her to tell him that she's his sister? Okay, if an attractive woman comes down and she's married and you would like to get her, kill her husband, she's a widow, she's yours. Pretty simple. How many? <laughs> oh, you can't be serious. Okay, here you go. In the British Museum, there's an ancient Egyptian papyrus which relates how a pharaoh, on advice of his counselors, sent armies to take away a man's wife by force and then to murder her husband. Documented. But, you see, if, if he's her brother, then to marry your sister, the person who wants to marry your sister has to arrange, you know, a payoff and that, you know, here's the dowry, here's whatever, but you get, they pay you and then you, okay, and then you let them have your sister. And so they have to contract for marriage. So if he's her husband, <coughs> end of problem. If he's her brother, they got to haggle. And so Abram is just going down thinking, oh, this is going to be bad. These people are kind of crazy here, you know, tell you what, tell them I'm your brother and then they'll have to haggle. And his plan is, We'll get down there. Somebody gets interested in here. They start haggling. We'll just disappear by night. I'm telling you. I'm guessing that's it. Say, where did Jacob get all that craftiness from? <laughs> that's the plan. Sarah goes with it. This isn't the first time it's going to happen. We'll, we'll circle back to that in a minute. But So say, I pray thee that you are my sister. You, you wonder if she's going, just, just, Tell me, my sister, that it may be well with me for, my, for your sake. I, I'm, I'm, I'm the one who's going to die down there. And my soul shall live because of you. Wait a second. And the Lord appeared unto Abram and said, Unto thy seed will I give this land. He doesn't have any seed yet, right? And God who appeared to him said he's going to have seed, right? So if he dies in Egypt, how can he have seed? But let me show you why we can do this. 
How many follow me here? We're not in the moment. We would never in the moment, you know, fumble. Would we? Oh, no. Tell me, my sister, so I can survive this. And it came to pass that when Abram was come into Egypt, that the Egyptians beheld the woman that she was very fair. So he says she's fair. He tells them she's going to see that they're fair. And then when she gets down there, we find out she's very fair. Everybody following the narrative here? Okay. So we can just look for her in heaven. Just point out a very fair. It's either, you know, Esther or nope, no, you've got to be Sarah. Very fair. The princes also of Pharaoh saw her, and they commended her before Pharaoh. Pharaoh, you've got to see this woman who just came in with this guy with all these herds. Man, she is amazing. Really? Get her. <laughs> and the woman was taken into Pharaoh's house. You see, the plan was great as long as it was anybody else but Pharaoh. But if it's Pharaoh, he doesn't have to ask. Pharaoh, take, you lose. He's king, see? How many... You know, that's the problem. We scheme and we get our best plan, right? And, you know, and, and a wrench goes into the gears here. She was taken into Pharaoh's house. How did this go down? A bunch of guys show up, you know, with the little fans and everything else around Abram. Go, hi, how are you? We're here from Pharaoh. Who are you? I am Abram. Who is she? She is Sarah. Who is she? Oh, she is my sister. Are you a sister? Oh, yes, uh, I'm, uh, he's my brother. Okay, come with us. And they grab her and they take her away. And she's looking at him going, you know, and he's going, So what we have here is the mother of the promised seed is now sitting in Pharaoh's harem. Aren't you glad? Remember, some of you in the room won't understand this, but remember when you used to have film in your camera? Remember that? How many remember that? Or like in a movie? Remember you used to have film? Remember that? Or even that thing came out of the TV, the VCR, it had film. And you'd get a little bad spot, you could clip it out and just, you know, splice it and keep going. Remember how many... No? Okay. Well, praise God that today you have digital. You got one shot. But back in the film age, there wasn't just one frame. There were many. And thank God, because if sometimes you look at our lives in one frame, it's not pretty, is it? She's getting dragged away. He's going, ba 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 And he's looking at his servants and looking at him going, you know, I mean, this is not good. By faith, Abraham totally fumbled in Egypt. <laughs> We love Peter, don't we? He's not alone. He's got us and Abram. Well, so they came and they took the woman she was taken into Pharaoh's house. What do you know? Pharaoh entreated Abram well for her sake instead of killing him. Why? Because they think he's his brother or her brother. And he had sheep and oxen and asses and men servants and maid servants and she asses and camels. And so he's just loaded up with all kinds of gifts. And, you know, with each gift, there's another, pre you know, another present from Pharaoh. He wants to buy your sister? Yeah, thanks. Yeah, bringing it. He's got to be feeling lower and lower. Not going as planned. By the way, since he's a future brother-in-law to the king, everybody wants to make friends with him. Well, the good news is, when God's people fumble, God's still there. Verse 17. And the Lord plagued, what does it say? Pharaoh. And what else? His house. Does it tell us what he did to him? No, but apparently, I, my guess is in my visual mind, it starts with Pharaoh and then begins to spread. So he shows up like, Pharaoh, what's that? What, that? what is that? And I don't know. I, they're, they're all over. You know I mean? And then pretty soon, boom, it's through everybody else. And in my mind, guess who was not touched in all that? Anybody? All the other women in the harem are like, what? how come you? Oh, <laughs> Somehow they figure out, wait a minute. I'd love to see the video, but okay. So uh, they're with great plagues, and the Egyptians are a very superstitious people. And we'll see that in the plagues of the Exodus. Great plagues because of Sarai, Abram's wife. So who spilled the beans? Did they bring Sarai in? They're like, look, nothing wrong with you. Look at us. Look at all this. What is your story, woman? And did she finally go, he's my husband, he's, my, he's not my brother. And I'm like, oh, you know what I mean? Just anyway, sorry. I, poor first service, I just, you know. I, 
So Pharaoh called Abram <laughs> and said, this is bad, what is this that you have done to me? Why didst thou not tell me that she was your wife? Do you think he was upset? Oh, yeah. You know, and you know the scene where there's the steps going up and he's on the throne and, you know, the wife of the white outfit's on if you see all the movies and everything. And, and he's, you know, and the guys are there with the fans and the headdresses and all that. And, and as he's screaming at Abram, they're all, you know, they look at him. So here's Abram with a whole court of Pharaoh going, you lied. Want to get away? Why did you not tell me she was your wife? Why sayest thou she is my sister? And I think he gave him a little time to hang himself here. And again, everybody the fans kind of... Um, um, anybody seeing Abram in a different light this morning? God's always faithful, isn't he? You know, you can have your best week. You read four chapters a day. You prayed however many hours, minutes, whatever that day. You did all the right things, and, and you really had a good week in your walk with God. You really had a good week. Does that mean he loves you more? Answer? No. You blessed them, sure. But his love for you has been set upon you. His love for you is determined and shown, demonstrated by the cross. God loves you. He loves you. Well, if you're here and you don't know him, he still loves you. He so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whomsoever believes in him would not perish. God loves you. He loves you, but you have sin. We've all sinned. I'm mean, sure you have. We've all sinned. You don't need me to tell you this. Well, I haven't killed anybody. Fine, but you've lied. You've stolen. You've, you know, we've all sinned. And he loves us anyway. But if we want to go to heaven and if we want to be with him and we want to be forgiven, there's only one sacrifice he will accept for sin and that is the death and the resurrection of his son Jesus. Whosoever believes in him, not by works, Abram's not going door to door here trying to get himself to heaven. He believed God and he stumbles and he falls. But guess what? It's his faith that saved him, not his works. So how are we saved? By faith. Does that mean sometimes one little slot, one little photo of the film of your life isn't going to be where you crash and burn? It happens to all of us. Why? Well, I find God does it to remind me that I need him desperately. But the story's not finished yet. In my life, in your life, the grace of God doesn't wear out. What a blessing. Why did you say she's my sister? So I might have taken her to me to wife. I, I think this was high volume. I think the feather fans were all like blowing back. from. Now, therefore, behold thy wife. Take her and go thy way. More than that, verse 20. Pharaoh commanded his men concerning him and sent him away. <laughs> you are being escorted out of my country, you dog. And he just, that, I mean, he's been given the bum's rush. How did that make way for the lying man, Abram, so we can get him out of Pharaoh's kingdom? Make way. You know, he's just, oh, it's a bad day. It's a bad day. Whew. Nothing worse than when the unbelievers rebuke the believers for their unfaithfulness. Right? If you've been there, I've been there. It is painful. When an unbeliever says, you know, you're being rude. And just, oh, <laughs> you're right. Uh, sorry, you know, God, you were trying to reach these people. What do I do? I show up and be behave like an idiot. I know none of you can relate. Third service, they can, but, <laughs> you know. Pharaoh commanded his men concerning him, and they sent him away. You're out of here. And his wife, and all that he had. Apparently, they didn't take back the consolation prizes. How did that trip come out of it? So, Sarah, how, you know, how you doing? Don't talk to me. <laughs> they take it, don't talk to me. How, don't even. Don't talk to me. Ladies, I mean, how would you be feeling, right? I mean, just don't, don't even, just... <laughs> don't talk to me. Now, it's one thing if this was the end of it, but turn to chapter 20. This, this happens again. I mean, this is like, wow. You'd think we'd learn it the first time, but no. No, no. 
We've got to face plant sometimes twice before we get it. Well, Ab Abram journeyed from thence, came down to uh, Kadesh and Shur and journeyed in Gerar. <clears throat> he said of sister Sarah, she's my sister, you know, and Abimelech, the king, Gerar, took her. Uh-oh. God came to Abimelech in a dream by night and said, Behold, you are but a dead man. I love this. You can read it two ways. Behold, thou art but a dead man, or behold, you are dead, man. <laughs> One way or the other. For the woman which you have taken, she is a man's wife. And Abimelech had not come near her. And he said, well, Lord, will, will you slay also a righteous nation? Did he not tell me she's my sister? And she said herself, he's my brother. And in the integrity of my heart, the innocency, innocency of my hands, I've done this. God said, yeah, I know. You did this in the integrity of your heart. I've also withheld you from sinning against me. Therefore, I didn't allow you to touch her. Therefore, restore this man his wife, for he's a prophet. He shall pray for you. What a shame when God's got to bail us out, isn't it? He's done it for me. I'm sure he's done it for you. If he hasn't, your time will come. <clears throat> know you not that you shall surely die, you and all that's yours, if you don't restore her? So Abimelech rose up early in the morning and called his servants and told them all these things in their ears. And the men were sore afraid. And then he called up Abraham and said, What have you done to us? Why have I offended you? You brought on me this and my kingdom a great sin. These deeds ought not to be done that you've done. Yeah, that's true. What sawest thou that you've done this thing? And Abram said, you know, I thought that there's no fear of God in this place. Now kill me for my wife's sake. And yet indeed she is my sister. Aha. She's the daughter of my father, but not the daughter of my mother. He married his stepsister. Later on in the law, this will be restricted. She became my wife. Well, aren't we splitting hairs here, aren't we? Half truth. Whole lie. Came to pass when God caused me to wander from my father's house, I told her this is what we ought to do. And so you can catch the rest later. But this... Pharaoh commanded, get him out of here with his wife, all that he has. And so, verse 13, or chapter 13, Abram went up out of Egypt, he and his wife, and all that he had. And by the way, we feel this is probably where they acquired Hagar. That's going to go well. All that he had and Lot with him, they went into the south. And what a long walk home that must have been. We'll get there next week. Father, we thank you. Let's stand. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. And uh, wow. <laughs> what would it have been like to stand there and hear that discussion? And yet, Lord, how I thank you so much that in spite of the failure of your servant, <clears throat> you remain faithful. How many times have we sat before you, broken over our own wretchedness? We have the Holy Spirit. We've received your Son. Our lives are changing, and yet our flesh is still there, and it's aided by the world and the devil, constantly looking to bring us back into the bondage of sin. Lord, I want to pray for anyone here this morning. They know you, but they are compromised. They've been lying to the people around them. They're backslidden. They're not where they need to be. They can't enjoy the sin, and they can't enjoy the fellowship. They're stuck because they've been deceived. And then the enemy comes along and tells them there's no way they can go back. As we watch Abram come back to the land of Canaan, get some things straightened out, and yet there'll still be some failures. But as he's faithful to come back, you are faithful to work in him. If you're here this morning and you think you're too far away from God because you are wrapped up in something, though you once knew him, turn around. He'll meet you right there. He'll cleanse you as you confess your sins just between you and him. As we sing this last song, you confess your sins. He will be faithful and just to forgive you your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. 1 John 1.9 but meanwhile, if you're here and you don't know the Lord, today is the day as you sit in Ur of the Chaldees that Jesus is calling you. He is alive. He changes every life that comes to him by faith. And even when his people are unfaithful, yet he is still always faithful. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. He'll chasten you, but he won't leave you. Thank you, Lord, for all these things. Be with us this week as we go. And go with those today who share the love of Christ at the flower show. Call them, bless them, anoint them. 
Bring them home rejoicing safely. In Jesus' name, amen.